Hey there, MJ traders and investors. It's Rod with Pow Group. Welcome back on the Pursuit of Wealth, your home for MJ stocks, crypto assets, and interviews. Also home to the best MJ community. Today is Wednesday, September 27th. Happy hump day. Hope you're doing awesome. And in this video, we're going to be discussing the Safer Banking Act markup in the United States Senate Committee in Banking, Housing, and Urban Affairs. It just concluded and it did pass. There was 14 in favor and nine opposed. So golf clap to the lawmakers who got this done. It's going to be heading to the Senate floor. We're gonna discuss all of that and more. I'll give my thoughts and opinions and we'll take a look at the MJ space and the charts and see what's happening in terms of price action and movement. Before we get to it though, make sure to smash the like, help support me in the channel. It doesn't cost you anything. If you're new, you can subscribe, tick the bell, all that good stuff. You'll be notified on any future live streams or whenever I post a new video. Also make sure to give Pow Group a follow on X, which is previously known as Twitter. The handle for that is at Group Pow. Going to be using that as my platform of choice going forward. Again, the handle for that is at Group Pow. Also make sure to check out powmerch.ca. There's 10% going on 10% off coupon code POWG420. You can use that until the end of the month. And uh, that's a thank you for all of the support. I really do appreciate and love each and every one of you who have supported me along the journey. And I'll be here making videos until the day I die. So here was the video that I just posted. I'll put this in the description and the comment section below as well. Uh, it was a live stream of the Safer Banking Act markup in the United States Senate Committee. It was just over an hour. It was actually, uh, I think it was just under an hour. I kept the stream going a little bit longer to see what uh, most people were saying, but you can check the live chat as well to kind of get a feel of what the community felt about that. But uh, yeah, but in my opinion, you know, this isn't a political channel and I'm in Canada, so I could care less about these, you know, either side of the aisle and these lawmakers. Uh, but all I will say is I want what is best for the MJ industry and anybody that you listen to in this hearing, if you do not think that they have the industry's you know the industry at uh, the best for the industry at heart, right? If they if they don't uh, think that if you don't think that they want the best for this industry for the medicine of the future, the best plant on planet Earth, then I would highly encourage you to decide whether or not you want to support him or her. Come time to vote, and you know the, the, again, not to get political. I'm not telling you who to vote for or who not to vote for, and I'm not telling you to buy, sell, or hold anything. This isn't financial advice. This is for entertainment purposes only. I'll never tell you to buy, sell, or hold, and you should never buy or sell anything because of anything I say are right. But I would just strongly encourage you to take a look and take a step back, and regardless of which side of the aisle, do what's best for this MJ industry because this is the best industry, in my opinion, bar none. And uh, I'm just excited and grateful to be alive and uh, to be here experiencing it with you all. But here's the article from MJ Biz Daily. They just reported it. And again, we covered this in the live stream. It was passed, so banking reform bill passes key Senate hearing. The latest push for federal MJ banking reform in the United States passed a markup hearing in the Senate Banking Committee on Wednesday, demonstrating bipartisan support for allowing state legal MJ businesses to access financial services and setting up bill, the bill for a full vote in the chamber. So it'll go to the it'll go to the Senate floor and the full Senate for a vote, and then it's my understanding that it'll go to the House after that, and then it'll get sign off from President Biden. And, you know, keep in mind that when these businesses are able to access financial services and join, you know, the, the banking system, it's going to cut back on a lot of issues, right? Especially, um, you know, the fact that everything, when everyone's operating as a all cash business, right? It's very dangerous for the employees. It's very dangerous for the people running the businesses and it's susceptible to robberies and things like that, right? Which could go very, very bad. And then, you know, being able to purchase MJ with a credit card, you know, something so simple as that, but, you know, let's join the 21st century, please. The outcome of Wednesday Senate Banking Committee hearing improves the prospects that regular financial institution can serve state legal MJ businesses despite federal MJ prohibition, reducing the MJ industry's inconvenient and dangerous dependence on doing business in cash. The 23-member committee voted 14 to 9 in favor of sending the bill to the Senate floor with technical amendments. It's the first time the banking legislation rebranded as Safer, Secure, and Fair Enforcement Regulation Banking Act has garnered a yes vote in the Senate. We know it passed the House multiple, multiple times and then stalled out in the Senate, right? So this is great strides. This bipartisan legislation represents an improved version of the Senate Banking Act, of the Safe Banking Act, normal political direct Mor uh, director Morgan Fox said in a statement. And if you haven't seen my recent interview 
You can just go over here to playlists as well. There's interviews, or you can just go to the live, and you can go here, normal, working to reform MJ Laws. So they're a nonprofit organization that or, that lobbies the U.S. government and also other uh, governments around the world in international chapters. Uh, we talked about rescheduling, safe banking, and a lot more in that video. So I highly encourage you to check that out. That was my second interview with Morgan Fox, political director at Normal. And uh, you can check out my original interview with him as well, which was a little over a year ago, by just going to playlists and clicking on interviews, and that'll bring that up. It allows state licensed MJ businesses to more easily access financial services, such as opening a simple bank account, and it provides entrepreneurs with greater access to lending and other services that are available to other legal businesses. However, the legislation is still far from becoming law. Next, the Safer Banking Act's uh, back, uh, Safer Banking Act faces a possible federal government shutdown on October 1st amid a political battle between the Democrat-controlled Senate and the Republican-controlled House of Representatives. So uh, I said this before, this could get either really good or really bad. So if the government shutdown occurs, then that reduces the chance, or if this doesn't pass the full Senate floor or doesn't you know pass other um, chambers, then we risk not getting anything done at all until the next administration comes in, right? 2024 is an, is a, an election year. So if we stall out here again, then it's entirely possible that we don't get any kind of banking reform until after the 2024 election. So keep that in mind. Uh, but this kind of gives them a little bit more fuel and, uh, you know, puts a little bit more of a fire under their butt to get something done, right? And uh, as we know, when Biden took office, he made all these promises. And so far, it's been false promises, but he did you know, start the research bill and then call on HHS to reschedule. They recommend the schedule three. Now we're waiting for DEA sign off. So, you know, it, it is, we're starting to see some snowball effect and some movement with regards to this administration, but I think we need more, right? And you can let me know in the comments below if you agree with that or not. But like I said, this government shutdown looming, typically October isn't great for stocks either. So I was saying that, that I was in the camp of thinking we could see a little bit more short-term pain before we see a massive end of year rally, both in MJ and the broader market, which should give nice tailwinds to the MJ rally. Uh, but keep in mind that historically, October isn't great for stocks. So in my opinion, I think the first, second week of October, uh, maybe spill over into the third week, we'll sh we should see a bottom and a little bit more downside in the in the MJ market and in the broader market at large. And then I think toward the end of October and into November is where we're really going to kick it into high gear. The potential shutdown would pose risks for safer banking as it winds its way through Congress, burning time that legislators could not otherwise use to pass legislation. <clears throat> Excuse me. Regardless of political unknowns, Wednesday's committee vote is likely to be seen as positive news for the regulated MJ industry. And a lot of people were commenting on why is MJ stocks down? Why are MJ stocks down after this news in the past? Well, keep in mind it could be a little bit of a sell the news event, right? Buy the rumor, sell the news. Uh, people were buying it. You know, if you take a look at Planet 13 over the last you know, a couple of days, it's up like 60% off of the lows after correcting like 60%. So uh, again, it was kind of a, a run up into that. There wasn't a huge run up, but also the broader market is weak today. SPY was was down a bit there, starting daily consolidation again today. Uh, if we just take a look at the SPY chart, actually, uh, yeah, it's a double bottom, 425.02 and we hit 425.01. So we, by one penny, lost the low of yesterday, uh, but it could get worse, right? So just keep that in mind that we have headwinds from the broader market. And uh, keep in mind that this is just the, the Senate uh, committee, you know, this is just one step, right? So we still need to go, this is just the Senate Banking Committee. Now it still needs to go to the floor, the Senate floor, and then has to go through House, which it's been approved multiple times, so I can't see that being an issue. And then it would go to Biden for full sign-off. So next steps for SAFER, SAFER Banking Act, is a revived and revised version of several previous MJ banking reform bills to make it through the House, but not the Senate. Before amendments introduced Wednesday, the version put before the Senate Banking Committee would offer safe harbor for financial institutions such as banks and credit unions that transact with state legal MJ businesses. However, those federally supervised institutions must still operate in a safe and sound manner and have processes and procedures in place to identify fraudulent or illegal activity. And let me know what you think of this hearing. If you joined the live stream, let me know what you think of this hearing overall. Uh, I think it was positive. And again, I'm not going to tell you which side of the aisle to vote for or who to vote for or who not to vote for, but I would strongly encourage you to think about it uh, regardless of your political stance and, uh, and who you support on either side of the aisle, that you take a step back and just do what's best for this MJ industry and vote those and keep those in office or put those in office that are going to move this industry forward and, and have this the best interest at heart for this industry. Other provisions in the bill would prevent federal regulators from making banks close to 
uh, close the accounts of state legal MJ businesses without a valid reason. Seems logical. Require the creation of uniform guidance and examination procedures for depository institutions that provide financial services to state-sanctioned MJ businesses and require new guidance regarding providing financial services to hemp-related legitimate businesses and hemp-related service providers. Critics of SAFER have faulted the bill for maintaining Bank Secrecy Act requirements that require banks to monitor transactions for suspicious activity and file reports impact of a looming shutdown. If a government shutdown does occur, it's anybody's guess as to how long that shutdown might derail further progress on safer by lawmakers. And like I said, I'm in the camp of thinking that it might not, we might not get anything done until the new administration comes in in, uh, in 2024 after the elections, right? Leaving the shutdown risk aside, senators could now try to further amend the bill on the Senate floor before a vote. MJ Equity Analyst Pablo Zuanic of New York-based Zuanic & Associates observed in a research note to clients last week. If the bill does muster the 60 votes required to pass the Senate, Zuanic wrote, its journey through the House could involve a prolonged process through mid-2024 uh, 2024, or a more rapid passage if it is included in a must-pass bill by year-end. And again, the, start, the, the uh, charts and everything right now, like not just Producers in the U.S., but in Canada, retailers in the U.S. and Canada, ETS in the U.S. and Canada, they're all looking like we could see massive, massive upside into November and December, which again could fall in line with this must-pass bill by year end of by year end, right? That sort of a thesis. And like I said, we're seeing golden crosses across the sector. We're seeing monthly uptrends very close to confirming on a lot of names. Cureleaf actually had a monthly uptrend confirm, which uh, I'll try to bring that up here at the end, depending on time. Uh, already uh, getting this video a little long. I wanted to keep it around 10 to 15 minutes. But in previous versions of the bill, formerly called Safe Banking Act, passed the House seven times albeit but when the ch uh, chamber was controlled by Democrats. However, Zuanek warned that the now Republican-controlled House has other priorities. So a little bit of FUD there, fear, uncertainty, and doubt uh, at the end of the article, just to kind of keep people guessing, in my opinion, but I, I don't think it will be an obstacle to, uh, to pass the House. But you can let me know in the comments below what you think of that. But MSOS, as you can see, we did hold the low of yesterday. 792 was low. We hit 793, so it's essentially a double bottom by just one penny. And then same thing with SPY, 425.02 is the low of yesterday and 425.01 was the low of the day today. So again, by one penny, we're touch touching down on daily oversold. We did confirm a weekly downtrend with a high, low, lower high, and lower low. So a downtrend is lower highs and lower lows. Uptrend is higher lows and higher highs. So you can see here we're in a weekly downtrend. That means zoom out on the monthly time frame and look for monthly consolidation, which is the second month in a row now where we're consolidating, losing the low of the previous monthly candle. But we're still in a monthly uptrend on the S&P 500. This is just healthy weekly consolidation and uh, monthly consolidation in my opinion. And we could very well be heading to weekly oversold. Uh, we don't have any support on the S&P 500 down to about 400 and then 400 psychological as well. And then it's also a price action level. So if we take a look at the MJ industry today, uh, in terms of gainers and losers on the day today, we have Ian, SHWZ and LOWL leading the decline. On the bull list, we have FIT, MRMD and BEV. And then in terms of Canadian MJ, we have XTRX, WIB and Labs leading the bull list. And on the bear list, we have OGI, CGC and NOVC. OGI had some news today uh, that they were going to be offering a uh, new prospectus. I'm just gonna bring this up real quick here. So MJ producer organogram files 500 million shelf prospectus. So that's 500 million Canadian dollars or 370 million US by issuing securities over a 25 month period. So there was some uh, negative reaction to that news today. Uh, but if we just take a look at some of our names here, MSOS, again, not losing the low of yesterday. We are at risk of a daily downtrend here with a lower high and lower low. So key support is gonna be 762. If we lose that, we confirm a daily downtrend, again, with a lower high and lower low. And it is a bit of a daily head and shoulders here as well with the left shoulder, head, right shoulder. So at the moment, we're still holding that support and it is a weekly bull flag as well, if we ignore that lower wick there. Uh, so if we could break above 988, then we'll confirm it and the target is about $16 there. But again, we're not in a weekly uptrend yet. We still haven't formed a weekly higher low and higher high. We're forming the higher low now and we need the higher high by breaking 988 to be in a weekly uptrend. And then in terms of the monthly time frame, we still need to confirm a monthly uptrend. This is a nice bounce, tons of room to form a monthly higher low, but we still haven't formed that higher low. And then moreover on Cura, as I mentioned, Cura is, is leading 
uh, the pack here with a monthly uptrend already having confirmed low, high, higher low. And then once we broke 568 here this month, that confirmed the monthly uptrend with the higher high. So we have the low, high, higher low, and higher high. So it's looking really, really good. And then, like I said, a lot of names here into the end of the year. Planet 13, I just did a video on them earlier today, or yesterday rather, uh, very close to seeing a golden cross with the 50 day below the 200 day moving average crossing. When that happens, it's referred to as a golden cross. And then Cure Leaf already had its golden cross. So the last time that happened on Cure Leaf was back in summer of 2020. Price went from about seven bucks all the way up to 23 bucks. Then we had a death cross with the 50 day above the 200 day crossing that was at around 15 bucks and then it went down to as low as three dollars now we're seeing a golden cross again even more beaten down than we were last time so this is exactly what we want to see even msos the etf is seeing a golden cross and then even etfs and canadian names seeing golden crosses as well so this is looking really good like i said more than likely going to see massive upside in fireworks into the end of the year here i would say into the end of october november we're really going to kick it into high gear and the more names that confirm monthly uptrends the better so this is looking really good but as i mentioned it was a bit of a sell the news type of event but it still has to go to the senate and then it still has to go to the senate floor and then it still has to go to the house and then it still has to be signed into law by biden so there's still some some steps but this is a great uh, step in the right direction uh, but again golf clap to uh, to everybody that helped get this done uh, danes was monumental and uh, he's an absolute rock star as mentioned by uh, morgan fox in my interview with there with normal and Morgan Fox. I highly encourage you to check that out. Also highly encourage you to check out the, this uh, full uh, version of the hearing. And if you just go to settings, you can change the playback speed as well. You can listen to it a little quicker. It is about an hour long. So if you want to change the playback speed, that will reduce the amount of time. Uh, but again, make sure to give Pow Group a follow on X at Group Pow is the handle for that. And make sure to check out powmerch.ca to score your swag and get 10% off by using code POWG420 until uh, the end of the month. But let me know what you think in the comment section below. We'll continue the comments. Uh, we'll continue the conversation in the comments. Always love hearing from you, your thoughts and opinions on this hearing and uh, whether or not you think it's going to pass the Senate floor this time around. It's Rod with Power Group. Thanks again for joining us on the Pursuit of Wealth. Hope you have a fantastic day and we'll see you again on the next video.